Good morning. Good morning. All right, we got a couple awake over here and a couple over here. We'll do that again. Good morning. Good morning. Well, first of all, happy Mother's Day. It is great to be with you all this morning. Um, first, as we get started, all females, you are either a mother or a daughter, and we want to celebrate you today. So make sure before you leave today, we should have enough for almost everyone to have two roses. So if you already got a rose, make sure you get a second one on the way out. If you don't have a rose, make sure you get one or two on your way out. Um, and this is our small little gift to say Happy Mother's Day to you. Um, our My daughters are fighting with the roses up here. Um, <laughs> and distracting everyone. <laughs> All right. Um, a few announcements as we get started this morning. Uh, first of all, our Sunday school meets at 945 in the back corner classroom. And we just started um, studying the book of Job as presented by Francis Chan. And then we also have discussion um, ourselves too. Uh, so please join us 945 in the back classroom. There is prayer meeting this Wednesday, which is May 17th at 1.30 in my office. So if you're available, I want to invite you to join me for that time. Um, also, men. We have men's group this Friday, May 19th, at Joe DeLeon's house. And we will be reading and discussing Hebrews chapter 9 this week. Um, also, next Sunday, May 21st, we are having a Mexican-themed potluck as well as our May birthday celebration right after service. And so we want to invite you, Nelda informed me this morning that she's gonna take charge of the, of most of it. So we're not doing it, we're not passing around a sign-up sheet, but if you think of it, please bring a Mexican themed dish or a Mexican dish to share. Um, and if you forget, that's okay, please join us for the potluck, and then also for the May birthday celebration. So that's right after church next week. Uh, just a reminder again that uh, our offering plate, if you're looking for it, is by the door um, as you are exiting. It's right there. And so if you're looking for that, that's where that is. We have another uh, blessing. We are blessed with so many talented people in this church. And we have been blessed with Lots of different individuals leading worship. We've been blessed, blessed with the Beecham's leading worship, with, with Bob Green and the Hardys leading worship, with Linda Margaretic, Elizabeth Knox leading worship, uh, last week Candace Kersey leading worship, and this morning we are blessed with the Sturley Girls um, who are going to be leading us in worship um, a cappella. So uh, please sing with them. Uh, as we go into worship. And so again, it is a joy to be here and welcome, happy Mother's Day to you all. And if you go ahead and stand now, um, oh, the songs are in your bulletin. Uh, they're not on the overhead, but they're in your bulletin. Uh, if you didn't get those, uh, you can go back or, or wave your hand and Nelda will get you a song sheet. And so now, if you stand, we'll ask the Surly girls to come forward, and we will join in worship singing. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. All right, this morning we're going to start with I Love You, Lord, number 181. Mm -hmm.
good I needed a little intermission music because <laughs> Ryan just said it's your turn I was like oh yeah <laughs> good morning good morning it's good nice morning. to see all of you this morning good morning to those online who are watching this morning's children's uh, scripture is Hosea 11 Hosea 11 3 it was I who taught Ephraim to walk taking them by the arms but they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. To them, I was like the one who lifts a little child to the cheek, and I bent down to feed them. So it's God speaking about his people in Jerusalem. I asked my students at school if they could imagine God, what would God look like to them? And um, they said, an old man, 
that was shiny with a robe and a beard and kind of far away. And I think that idea of someone of wisdom and stature is a good idea of who God is, but it's incomplete, right? Because God made people um, to reflect his image, men and women. And so I have these little figurines that are like in our house. This one is uh, me and Miley, and this one is Magali and I. And um, they just remind us of a tender relationship that, that we long for and we work towards, right? And I think this picture of motherhood is also given to us in the Bible that that's the way God feels about his children, right? Like God gives us things to do here on earth that reflect him, the Imago Dei or the image of God. And one of those things is motherhood, like how we treasure children and care for them and love on them and nurture them. That's how God feels tenderly towards us. And there's all of these amazing scriptures. If you look um, in the Old and New Testament, like um, God is like an eagle who shelters his, ch like shelters the chicks, right? He's a shelter. There's another image of God where he, um, he's like a ferocious mama bear. He's like going to take down whoever gets after his cubs. Um, there's one of a nursing child, like a mother and a nursing child, like that those pictures that of who God is towards us and how he treats us are found in his word, not just with an old gentleman with a beard and full of wisdom, but also as a tender, loving mom that reaches down and loves on his people and forgives them and loves on them. So this, I thought that this picture was good too, right? This picture of loving and caring and tenderly caring for each one of us. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for how uh, you made folks to reflect you in your glory. And uh, we thank you for this day and how it gives us a, like a broader picture of who you are and who you are towards us, how you nurture us, how you shelter us, how you love us, how you lead us by the hand, tenderly, carefully watching us, how um, you are that uh, father picture to us, but also that mother picture as well. And so we pray, Father God, that you would teach us to love you um, in the way that you reveal yourself to us in your compassion. Um, and we just thank you for this day. In your name we pray, amen. And we are going to go ahead and dismiss our children's to child our children to children's church right now. And so, if you head on out, Mrs. Nielsen will be with you. Um, and as they head out, we are going to go into our time of congregational prayer. And we are again blessed and privileged that God invites us, encourages us to come to him with our prayers, our prayers of praise, our prayers of thanks, our prayers of request as well. And so we have the opportunity to do that as a congregation. And so I wanna invite you during this time, if you feel comfortable doing so, to pray a prayer out loud. And if you're not comfortable praying out loud, no problem. I wanna invite you to pray with us silently. And if you're here this morning and you feel like, I'm not sure what to pray or I'm not even sure how to pray, Again, no problem, because scripture tells us that the Spirit will pray on your behalf. And so let's go before God in prayer together. Lord, we do praise you and thank you for this morning. We do praise you and thank you for the chance to celebrate Mother's Day, to celebrate the women who gave birth to us, that raised us, that nurtured us, whether they grew us in their bellies or they grew us in their hearts. Lord, thank you for our moms. Lord, thank you for this beautiful day, the chance to gather together to worship you through song, through prayer, through fellowship with one another, and through your word. Lord, we are reminded today about love, not just the love of a mother, but your love, your love that is perfect love your love that is complete and unending, unbreakable. We praise you and thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, as our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you invite us to come to you with our prayers and that you are there and you hear our prayers and Lord, you are faithful to answer them. Sometimes your answer is yes, sometimes your answer is no, and sometimes your answer is wait. But Lord, you are faithful to answer. So Lord, help us to align our will with yours so that we know that your answer 
even if it's not exactly the answer we were hoping for, is in our best interest, is good, because you know more than we do. You see the big picture. And so, Lord, we thank you that we can gather together and pray. And so, Lord, hear us as we pray as a congregation now. Lord, again, we thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for the many in this church who have all kinds of different uh, giftings and talents and abilities and the way that they serve you by serving one another, serving this church from behind the scenes to up front and everywhere in between. Lord, thank you for that. And Lord, we do pray that you would open our ears and our hearts and our minds to hear from you what it is you want to say to us this day. And Lord, in all that we do, all that we are, both individually as well as as a congregation, may you be glorified. And so, Lord, we lift all of these prayers to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And now we will have our scripture reading and followed by the Lord's Prayer. 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7 Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever And if you will stand, we will continue with our worship singing. <coughs> Do I lift up my soul? 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 Do I lift up my soul?
lift up my soul. I'd like to invite you to open your Bible to today's passage. We're taking a one-week break from Luke. And if you would open to the Gospel of John, chapter 13. And our scripture for for today is just one verse, and that is John 13, verse 34. So read it along with me. It says, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. The sermon title for this morning is, By This They Will Know. And I love, uh, I love Calvin and Hobbes. I don't know how many of you ever read Calvin and Hobbes, but I love Calvin and Hobbes. And I found one fitting for today, and so I, I want to just briefly share what this Calvin and Hobbes cartoon shows it has Calvin and Hobbes out like uh, in nature and Calvin says Hobbes look there's a little raccoon on the ground and then Hobbes of course says is it alive and Calvin responds I think so but he's hurt see he's hardly breathing Hobbes replies better not touch him if he's hurt and Calvin says yeah you wait here and guard him. I'll run and get mom. Hobbes says, I sure hope she can help. To which Calvin replies, of course she can. Don't you, or you don't get to be a mom if you can't fix everything just right. Well, like we've said multiple times, today is Mother's Day. A day where we recognize and celebrate those special people in our lives who love, nurture, teach, and, well, mother us. It's a day when we can show our appreciation to mothers who give so much. I must tell you, though, some Mother's Day experiences can be more revealing than others, as one mom found out. Her two children ordered her to stay in bed, so she stayed in there, looking forward to being served breakfast in bed. Well, as the smell of bacon floated up from the kitchen, she waited and waited patiently, as only a mother could do. And at last, 
the children called her downstairs, and she found them sitting at the table, each with a large plate of bacon and eggs. And when they noticed her, one of them looked up and said, as a Mother's Day surprise, we have cooked our own breakfast. <laughs> well, that says it all, don't you think? Who else in the world does more for us than good old mom? Who else is taken for granted more than our mom? It is only right that we devote at least one day to honor these women who have devoted their lives to Christ, to their family, to their children, and to their church. And so our gospel teaching today could actually easily be about being a good mother. However, it's not only aimed at mothers, it's for all of us. So guys, if you were thinking you could check out today because it's a Mother's Day sermon, no, sorry, you can't check out on me because this applies to all of us. Jesus is looking to the cross where he will glorify God by his perfect obedience to God's plan. He is also calling his disciples to perfect obedience. And the question is, just what is this perfect obedience to which he calls them and ultimately calls us. A new command I give you, Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Notice here that love is not an option for followers of Jesus. Jesus says a new command I give you. This is not just a suggestion, nor a recommendation. Jesus is not saying, I think this might be a good idea. He is saying, a new command I give you. It is a command. Well, why? Why should we have such a command? Well, the answer is because in every one of us, there's a part that rebels against the idea of pure, unconditional love. And maybe we don't realize it, but we do. Even in the ways that most of us, almost every one of us, has received our mother's love, there is still a part of us that thinks that this kind of love doesn't truly exist in the world in which we live. There's a part of us that says, love is great, but there has to be a point where a person says, enough is enough. However, I want to share with you this morning that there is never enough when it comes to love. All of us are capable of that love that many of us equate to a motherly love. A love that is unconditional. Now, I want to say here before we go on. And before some people check out and say, we're human, we cannot love unconditionally. That's true. But that doesn't mean we stop striving for that. Just because we are human and we are not God, and so we cannot love perfect, that we don't want to use that as an excuse to say, well, because I can't love perfect, I'm not even going to try. Because we're still called to try. We're still called to... Jesus himself says, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. So he is telling us to pursue that, to pursue that kind of love. The story is told about a teacher who was helping one of her kindergarten students put on his boots. And he asked for help, and, and she could see why. With her pulling and him pushing, the boots still did not want to go on. And when the second boot was finally on, she had worked up a sweat. She almost whimpered when the little boy said, um, teacher, they're on the wrong feet. Oh. And she looked and sure enough, they were. Well, it was not any easier pulling the boots off than it was putting them on. And she managed to keep her cool as together they worked to get the boots back on, this time on the right feet. 
Well, the little boy then announced, these aren't my boots. She bit her tongue rather than get right in his face and scream, why did you not say so? Like she so wanted to do. And once again, she struggled to help him pull the ill-fitting boots off. He then said, they're my brother's boots. My mom made me wear them today. <laughs> she did not know whether to laugh or cry. And so she mustered up the grace to wrestle the boots on his feet again. And finally, when the boots were on again, she said, now, where are your mittens? And he said, I stuffed them in the toes of my boots. <laughs> Have you ever had one of those days? Uh, I think all of us have. And the question is, will we bite our tongues and do that good thing that we know that we should do? Will we face the countless little crosses that appear before us each and every day? And will we willingly take on the burdens that should not be ours to take, despite a lack of appreciation and understanding among those whom we are helping. You see, this is what love does. It accepts the little crosses, knowing that the large cross has already been taken for us. Knowing that because Jesus has accepted us, we can accept others in his love. That we can trust them into his care, his judgment, his mercy, and his righteousness. And never more so than with those towards whom love is the hardest to show. This is the love that seeks to embrace us. This is the love that is more than simply our guide and our model. It is the love that when received is more than able to pour itself, itself out upon others, no matter how we might feel about them. It's the love of the one who gave himself for us while we were yet enemies of God. The freely given love of the one whose faithfulness destroys our death and whose resurrection restores our life. Love one another as I have loved you. This means to be open to the new and to that which was previously impossible for us. That may mean to be open to those that our feelings tell us are unclean or unholy or unacceptable or undesirable. And for some, that may be someone in their own family has hurt them beyond words. For others, it may be the nameless panhandlers and the refugees who beg for help, or the sinners who enter into our homes to steal not only physical treasures, but to rob the entire family of its joy and hope. And for still others, it may be an employer, a debtor, or some group of persons that have done us or our world an injury. Blessed be the one whose love does not fail and who wills to give us that love and who vows to take care of all who follow him, to nurture them, to help them grow and to usher them into the blessedness of his eternal kingdom. God will be the one who judges all people. That's not our job. That's not what Jesus commanded of us. No, Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. And God loves us most powerfully. And he gives us the power to love others. We find it challenging to love someone who we find hard to love. But God still says, love them. And I think it's important. When God says, love them, if they're disobeying God or they're doing things that are against what Scripture, that doesn't mean that we say, oh, what you're doing is okay. But just like us who were still sinners, God 
loved us. We're to show that same kind of love. And then as we do that, it's so important to remember that God loves you. God loves you without condition and will make your life full and abundant as you love others with that same love. Here's another story I'd like to share this morning. An elderly woman and her young grandson, whose face was sprinkled with bright freckles, spent the day at the zoo together. Lots of children were waiting in line to get their, cheek, their cheeks painted by a local artist who was decorating them with tiger paws. Well, when she saw the little boy, she said, you've got so many freckles, there's no place to paint. And that's what one of the girls said to this young boy in the line. Well, embarrassed by this, the little boy dropped his head. His grandmother knelt down next to him. I love your freckles, she said. When I was a little girl, I always wanted freckles. And she said that while tracing her finger across this child's cheek. Freckles are beautiful. The boy looked up. Really? he asked. Oh, of course, said the grandmother. Why, just name one thing for me that's more beautiful than freckles. The little boy thought for a moment, peered intensely into his grandma's face, and softly whispered, wrinkles. <laughs> well, may all of our friends and all those who would be our enemies if we let them be, have beautiful freckles and gorgeous wrinkles. For us here at Quincy Community Church and those who are joining on Facebook Live, wherever you are, it's time to let go and let God. To love one another as Christ loves you. With a love that saves and redeems his people both Jew and Gentile alike. I share this today because this is a perfect example of why Jesus commanded us to love one another. Because without the command that we love one another just as Jesus has loved us, we might end up thinking that it's good enough to pick and choose who we're going to love. Like only your friends and your family, and to hate or despise or simply ignore everyone else that does not fit into our idea of what it is to belong. And we might be tempted to turn our heads when those whom we consider less than perfect are in need of love and compassion. But we need to not do this. We're called to love others in the same way that Christ loved us. We are called to love our brothers and sisters in the same way that a mother's love is given to her children. We are called to love without condition, to care for and to pray for others regardless of their attitude toward us. Regardless of what they may or may not deserve, regardless of whether or not they are related to us by blood, by ties of affection, or even by common interest. Jesus commands us, he orders us to love one another just as he loves us. And our ability to love comes from our relationship with him. We love because he First loved us, says the Apostle John in 1 John 4.19. We are able to love because he loves us. And understanding this is vital to our ability to live out the Christian faith. It's vital to our ability to keep the command that Jesus gave to us. Of all the things he could have said, Jesus said, love one another. Of all the hidden knowledge he could have revealed, of all the spiritual depth 
he could have sounded, he chose to remind them and us to love one another as he has loved us. And that is what we need to hear this morning over and over and over again. In churches all over, preachers are giving advice to mothers this morning. And some of you might even be thinking, is that it, Ryan? Aren't you going to go into more detail than simply love your children? Love one another? Well, I think for many parents, getting into more detail with their children is actually part of the problem. I realize getting into the details is often what comes naturally to parent to many parents. And too often, our ability to keep it short and simple is lost in the complexity of being a parent. And if you can keep that in mind, if you can keep in mind that love is the most basic thing our children need from us, then all the other things will fall into place. We all need to remember this lesson with the simple command to love your children. Which, by the way, I realize might be a simple command, but it is not easy. Of all the details of the Christian's faith, love is the most important and the most basic. Love should be our defining quality. People should know that we are Christians by our love. Jesus said, love one another even as I have loved you. So remember the love that has lifted you up when you have fallen. And love one another in that same way. This is the word of the Lord for us this day. And may it take root in each and every one of our hearts. And may it grow and bloom and blossom. Amen. I'm going to invite our worship leaders up for our closing song. And then I will end with the benediction. So if you'll go ahead and stand. We will sing the closing song. Thanks, Ryan. 49, you are my hiding place. Da -da -da.
for the benediction this morning, I would like to lift up this prayer. And so if you just bow your heads and pray with me. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women that they may be strengthened. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we may honor them always with a spirit of profound love and respect. Grant this, Lord, to all of us that we may love like you have loved us. And grant this through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Don't forget to get another rose or two roses, ladies. Have a very, very happy and blessed Mother's Day.